Ken Russ, and I'm here to celebrate Thanksgiving. What better way to celebrate Thanksgiving than, say, with football and maybe a turduncan? I'm here to talk about John Madden and John Madden's astrology. And by the way, if you're new at astrology and you want to learn it, this is going to be a great way because you know John Madden's personality. You know what a great broadcaster he was. You know that sometimes he was kind of a rambling fool. You know that he made football fun, even if you were a casual fan. Taking a look at John Madden's background, huh, he tried to play football. Yes, he did. He played for a junior college, and he even got drafted in the 21st round. And those of you that don't know this at home, the 21st round is pretty much you're going to go off into oblivion. But that's not actually what happened. He was in line to make the team probably as a third stringer, but he had a knee injury right before the first game, and he never got on the full squad. He never got signed. But that determination of loving football guided him the rest of his way. He's a very determined soul. Remember that when we get to his astrology. Well, he then got into coaching and he coached everywhere. He coached junior college. He, he coached high school. He, char, he, he would coach at, at division three. He eventually landed a spot with the Raiders, then in Los Angeles, then in Oakland, I should say. During that time, he worked his way up the ranks. He was like basically like a fourth assistant. And then he became the, the line coach. And then he became the head coach because owner Al Davis turned to him one day and said, you're exactly what we need. And I think I can win a championship with you. Well, after a bunch of tries and after losing in the championship game to say the likes of the Kansas City Chiefs, who went on to beat <clears throat> the Minnesota Vikings in the Super Bowl, in 1976, John Madden accomplished that feat by defeating the Minnesota Vikings. But I digress. His place in the pantheon of NFL coaches was solidified. So much so that he also realized how, uh, how much it took out of him. So he decided to kind of get an easier job. Well, in 1979, a few years after winning the Super Bowl, he decided to go into broadcasting. He bounced around a little bit and had a couple of different partners, but when he landed with the likes of Pat Summerall, he found someone that not only could keep up with him, but also could compliment him. Now, that doesn't mean that John Madden didn't work with some other greats. He worked with, um, he worked with Vince Scully. He worked with Al Michaels. He worked with um, Bob Costas over the years. He had interactions with other people, but nothing clicked quite like Pat Summerall. Well, here's the fun of the whole thing with this. When we look at his chart, you're going to realize what kind of a special person Pat Summerall was at the end of the day, because he was also a stonk businessman. He knew exactly what he was doing. He was getting advertising for the side of his cruiser. And oh, by the way, he had an aversion to flying, which comes up in his chart. I can't wait for you to take a look at how it is that his smarts translated into things that he did in the day-to-day -day life right out of his charts. He did things like get back by Outback, who, by the way, carried the turducken for about two seasons. <clears throat> it didn't really sell all that much because it's kind of an ugly thing, but it became a calling card every Thanksgiving. And anybody that doesn't mind a second helping of stuffing knows exactly what a turducken is. But let's not stop there. Let's not forget, in 1996, when the first Madden came out, it was blocky. It was kind of clunky. It was kind of this. It was kind of that. But it was fun. It put the game into your hands. Before then, we had a thing called Tecmo Bowl, which had three different plays that you could play. And it was basically over and over again. By the way, Montana to Jerry Rice, you're welcome. But in 1996, when Madden came out, it revolutionized how we even looked at football. And it had the voice casting of John Madden behind the scenes. I just over here, Brett Favre. He came out with some of the funniest lines you've ever seen. And anyone that was playing that had two of these during that time knows exactly what I'm talking about. In 1999, it went supernova. He actually had the third highest sales game in the world. He was behind. He was number one in the United States but he was number three in Europe, in the rest of the world, rather. He was behind FIFA soccer, which kind of made sense in a way, in a little game called Super Mario. But here in the United States, football ran supreme. John Madden, on a whim, said, sure, I'll do a couple of play-by-plays. 
he went into an announcing booth and they said, who writes this crap? And before you knew it, he was rambling things like, well, that's why you get up looking out your ear hole. His funny quips made him the game. It made us love the game all the more and want to see it in every single way. We would build leagues. We would build seasons. We would rename some of the characters and the players to say us. And all of a sudden, I passed Emmett Smith for the rushing record. It's a thing. John Madden's indelible voice went hand in hand with even Thanksgiving. Handing out the award of Turk Duncan. It's ridiculous, everybody. It's absolutely ridiculous. It has nothing to do with football. But talk about branding. Talk about being able to be identified by something very unique. Now, let's take a look at his chart. His chart is everything I just said, and I'm about to point it out. And those of you that are new at this, think about John Madden's personality. It's the reason why I'm doing this video. I want you to learn a little bit about astrology through the eyes of one of the greats. Now, just in case you're marking this at home, oh, he's an Aries with an Aries rising. With a Scorpio moon, and I'm going to show you how his Scorpio moon ended up not necessarily mattering, but it ended up being everything. By the way, that's where Pat Summerall was. Moving right around the chart here, I'm going to start with the ascending line. The ascending line goes direct into Aries right here on the left-hand side, and then you have Mercury and the sun. And guess what? When you see that, and in such a direct way at 20 degrees, guess what? That means you're going to be a broadcaster. That means you're going to be somebody in entertainment announcing some sort of projected media where the world is going to be able to see you. Spot on, John Madden. You were meant to do this. Vesta is sitting here, and that's about learning. So this is somebody that has a high IQ, a high emotional IQ, and learns as he goes. Now, this Uranus and Mars in conjunct right here, and by the way, this is a bit of a traffic jam. I'll admit it. But when you look at it, Mercury and the sun act on its own, and then Uranus and Mars act on its own. Well, what is Uranus aside from technology? And what is Mars aside from pushing it forward? He actually has the markings of being connected to revolutionary technology. Boom! Way to go, Madden. And by the way, I don't want to be on the cover either. Without getting into too much of his personal life and his healing, having Chiron in Gemini in the second house is that his family, he is going to be able to heal through the money that he might earn, up to and including being able to provide for everyone around him. He's able to do what he loves and also do something to get paid for it. That's a unique position. We'll talk more about the North and the South node here in a second. But Pluto, sitting in, in Cancer in the fourth house, tells you everything you need to know about his compass. He was focused in on family. He was going to take care of his family one way or the other, which is why he decided to drive instead of fly everywhere. He was deathly afraid of it. And as you look here in the eighth house, Lilith in the relationship just simply means that he actually had a great foundation with his home life. The moon sitting here in the eighth house, and by the way, he has all of the hallmarks of someone being intuitive. Maybe not necessarily psychic, but he was definitely intuitive, which by the way, you need as a coach, you need as a broadcaster, you need to be able to anticipate things. As a businessman, he really excelled. The moon sitting here at 29 degrees in Scorpio is actually a deterrent. He was able to kind of push his emotions down, but love everything that was around him. This is why he was a great guy. This is also the reason why when John Madden blew up and they weren't going to sign, re-sign Pat Summerall, he said, well, then I guess you lost both of us because he's my partner. That moon placement is everything you need to know about a negotiation and sticking up for one of his best friends. And by the way, they didn't necessarily get along the best. They weren't always at barbecues with one another. But boy, he understood when somebody worked well, that's the person you go with. It's part of the reason why he was a great coach and beat the Minnesota Vikings in 1976 in the Super Bowl. But let's take a look at his ninth house. You want to talk about somebody that travels? 
Jupiter, which is ruled by Sagittarius in the ninth house, is his placement. He has Jupiter in Sagittarius in his ninth house, which means travel and travel and travel, which also means let's get out of here. Let's go. Let's go. He needed a Thelma to his Louise and he took off. It's almost like he was a turtle with a shell on his back and say, anytime, any place, whatever you need me to do, so long as I get to call the game. He literally lived out of his tour bus the entire season. It's in his chart. Oh, and why would he be afraid of flying? Remember how I mentioned Uranus and Mars together in the first house? He had a personal fear that technology would fail him. Therefore, he didn't want to fly. The bus was attainable. The bus was something he could do. And the bus is something you could write out back on the side of it. So you got gas across country. He was a smart businessman and he knew how to do this. The North Node and being ruled by Capricorn, his 10th house was all about business. He was about doing it right. And he was also about making sure that he was going to be able to do all of the other things. Like say, take care of his family. Now, his 12th house is very interesting here because he has Saturn in Pisces, which is up is down and down is up. Pisces uh, Pisces houses Saturn like this. It's not a very comfortable thing. As a matter of fact, it becomes comfortable because the 12th house is also ruled by Pisces. So Saturn in his structure was kind of an easygoing type of guy. Sure, he had his scruples and he had his value system, but you didn't get upset when he told you that it didn't work or it wasn't for him. Having Venus in at 29 degrees in the 12th house as well allowed him to chase his dreams and what he loved. He loved football. Everything about what he did in his speech at Canton, he literally talked about, by the grace of God, I was able to do this work my entire life. It is what I love, it is who I am, and it is who I will be remembered as. And isn't that the truth? Uh, Taking a look at John Madden now and who he was over the years and what he's meant to so many people, it's kind of interesting to be able to pull it apart astrologically. And by the way, here in this picture as he's being carted off the field after defeating the Minnesota Vikings in 1976's Super Bowl, he's literally joyous. And I'll take the L for this one here, John. All right, guys, hope you like and subscribe. Hope you follow along. I have cool videos like this. I have quick takes on the world on the world at large, and I'm going to be here to pick you up because this is the work I'm meant to do, to be the light of the world and help everybody become the best version of themselves. I really do hope you learned something today, and I want to remind you all to have a great Thanksgiving and keep going.